distances now. I want you to quiet down. The energy that you're feeling is real bright, high energy. It's coming from the consciousnesses that have been at God's country place. It's very noticeable that there, you'll get into this now. Let's try to even close that blind there if we can. So that, see this. It's difficult to demonstrate a holy instant to feel this. Because it's experiential. It doesn't have to do with your ideas about it, does it? This is doubtless who is can you see? Is it all right if I demo? Is this okay? I'm going to let it hang out a little bit here. See who we got. You guys aren't going to hurt me or burn me or anything. I, I want you to get the idea that it's okay for you to have a process, you new guys. If it's not okay for you to have a process, you're never going to get this. you got to let it be okay to demonstrate for God. Because the ritual of worship is a demonstration. And I know that you feel, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a shaker. Are you familiar with the shaker movement? We call ourselves waivers or something. <laughs> the, the direct contact with, with this obviously is the, is the insertion of of a range of electromagnetic, and you call it energy if you want to. But you are nothing but an energetic association. And the admission of that, that you're more than a body, that you're a, a cumulative great ray association, as Master Jesus would teach you in the Course, is very valuable to you. What the hell is the sense in doing the Course in Miracles if you're not going to go through a transformation? Well, see, I want an answer to that from you so-called Course. There, it, it's absurd. The Course in Miracles is the Course in Enlightenment. It's not a Course in practicing forgiving your mother-in-law. It doesn't have anything to do with human beings. It has to do with God. This is a God contact. If you don't want to contact God, don't come around me. I'm contacting God. I mean, God, not, not your idea of some sort of religious association of uh, uh, perceptual connections between what defines God. God is a fact. We are experiencing fact, a fact. For the first time, maybe, for the first time in your perceptual life, you could actually have a godly experience. You'd be embarrassed by it. You'd be ashamed by it. You'd say, well, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. I wouldn't want to really make a confession that there really is. I have to keep this veil on top of me. I've got to crouch around. If you feel what's going on here, you can get an idea that these consciousnesses are undergoing tr literally transformations of their minds. If this doesn't occur to you, what, what are you doing? Are you going to stay here and just study your own associations with your own thought forms, you coarse people? Your projected thought forms have nothing to do with reality at all, do they? Nothing. They have nothing to do with them. You don't know what they are. Okay. You must be what you are. And this is what's happening. Does this disturb you? Are you fearful of somebody that would stand up and suddenly you feel this in your head? You go, I better run away. I better get out of here. What's happening to me? Why am I feeling this? You're an emerging species. You're becoming spiritual man. You're the essence of a new reality. You're the forerunners of a new reality. Someday I'll teach this with no religious significance at all to give you a fundamental idea that you are undergoing an evolutionary process of your mind. What do you think your mind is for? Why do you hold it down into this range of associations of the form? Where does your idea of God come from? What's wrong with us contacting God? 
I can't even get you to talk about God here. We don't talk about God here. Well, we, we talk about him on Sunday. I don't mind admitting, but you got your God and I've got my God. And uh, meanwhile, we'll struggle with this and do it. This is, that's not what I declare to you. I'm declaring to you that there's a God. You say, well, I don't doubt that. Then I say, how come you're in sick and pain and dying if there's a God? Didn't God make you perfectly in the certainty of his own reality? How come you're not that then? Well, I'm undergoing a process. Okay, well, let's undergo a process then. How else are you going to do it? Somebody, anybody, what are you going to do? You're a body. I see you sitting there looking at this. You're doing this in your own mind. If you can't under, if you can't change somewhere in you, if the course in miracles is not a course in atonement or enlightenment, what is it? Where did it come from? <laughs> where, where did this come from? All these written words in here. Who wrote the? Who wrote this? Who directed this? Where is he? Watch your mind shut down on this. Huh? Where's the guy that wrote this? Is there a separate place from this? This wasn't written here, was it? Helen Chuckman didn't write it. Would you dare admit that this is written by a consciousness transcended out of time? Throw out the religion. I, it doesn't have anything to do with being crucified on the cross. It doesn't have anything to do with the conceptual comparisons of the man Jesus with the Gnostic traditions of the third and fourth century. This is it's absurd. I'm talking about the declaration that there was a man who underwent an experience of resurrection what you termed 2,000 years ago and is now directing you out of body to the declaration that you are in that process yourself. How you could look at the Course and not say, wow, wow, could that really be so? Could this really be happening to me? Where did it come from? How did it happen to come here now? It was never here before. You were never here before. You were never in this dream before. This is the culmination of your associate dreams in space-time. This is your going out time. This is your growing up time. This is your maturation. This is the time that you chose to wake up. The workbook lessons for this morning will demonstrate that to you that this was the time that you chose. Well, is, does, do I have to have an experience? How else are you going to keep from dying? You set yourself up to die. You're a human being on the planet. You were born here. You have children. You have a family. And you're going to die unless you're capable of disowning your associations with sickness and death and declare through the revelation of your mind that you're not going to die. You have to do it. Otherwise, you're going to die because you've designed yourself to die. You don't have to take notes on this. You've already designed yourself to die. Why? You've designed yourself to take notes so tomorrow you can study this. There isn't any tomorrow. <laughs> What's tomorrow? I don't understand it. When's that going to be? That's today. I'm supposed to deliver a message to you. This is the last day. So if you still feel like you got to make some telephone calls, you better run and make them. <laughs> I'm very serious. You guys coming to your altar need to make your amends. You better get out and do them. Clean your act up. Some of you guys got real crappy stuff. See, the Course in Miracles doesn't teach 
well, it teaches it, it declares it through love, doesn't teach amends, but some of you guys are carrying a lot of grievance and junk. This is a carryover from what I told you last night. Okay, you got one. You better take care of that. There's, there's no, I know you guys perfectly well. I was a human being. Don't fill me with, fool me with your resentment. You, some of you have been carrying them for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, this morning. Some of you had a couple bad ones this morning. Do you understand what an amend is? Anyone? It has nothing to do with reciprocity. Stop it. Stop thinking that an amend has something to do with the response that the consciousness gives you. You want to hear this? It has nothing to do with the response you get. You call them on the phone and you say, wow, hi, how are you? And I love you and that's it. You're so determined that you need to somehow be justified for your own grievance. Stop justifying your grievance. Okay? The extension of yourself in the forgiveness, I'm back into the 12-step uh, program a little bit here because this is a part of that. You're held in the bondage of your determination to defend yourself in that relationship idea. Cut it out. How are you going to change it except in your own mind? It has absolutely nothing to do with the response the consciousness has give you. Is there a question on this, you non-amend makers? <laughs> You're carrying your pride. You got all sorts of pride about the situation. You're very fearful of what the response is going to be. You're very guilty about the things that you've done. The whole basis of this teaching is that's okay. Okay. That you're carrying the guilt of previous associations in your own mind. But the only way you can do it is to clean it up. Who cares what the response is? Then become non-defensive. Are you in a, and you find yourself in conflictual defensive associations? That's what your relationships are. They are conflictual associations, of course. They're, they're arbitrations of death and sickness. Some of you undergoing these experiences at high levels are finding a, a considerable amount of conflict in your what you call special personal relationship but nothing is more conflictual than the relationship itself i assure you of that that relationship is based on some sort of uh, equanimity some sort of balance of the uh, of separation a determination to die so you may well undergo some conflicting associations if you walk up to a to a special one and say i've decided i'm going to i commit my life to god I've decided I'm going to take this seriously. I've decided I'm not going to die. I've decided I'm not going to get sick anymore. I've discovered that sickness is a decision, and I won't get sick anymore. He says, ha, 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 well, you just wait a minute. You're going to be just like the rest of us. You'll be just as dead as we are. They'll tell you this. I'm from deep experience. They'll tell you that. It'll catch up with you. My, si I, my sister has all of the resentments that I gave up. So does my brother. <laughs> Those are my, my Nazareth connections. My sister is a totally, absolutely resentful consciousness. She's very determined that, that this is a place where you must die in order to be in heaven. She's a Christian. A Christian, <laughs> as she defines herself. The necessity to die is a part of the religion of Homo sapien, of the religion of man. It has nothing to do with God at all. God does not demand your death. I didn't mean to get into this talk. How did I get into this? Every time I open my mouth, I get into a talk. <laughs> <laughs>